I am uh, joined in, right now by Paolo Humaita. He is the founder and CEO of Bluefields Accelerator in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And uh, Paolo, welcome to the Global Church Forum. Thank you for having me here, Holly. It's a, pre a pleasure. Hey, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, a little bit about your uh, growing up years. Sure. Uh, well, I grew up in the countryside of Brazil, and uh, I moved to a bigger city to, to study economics. Um, I became Christian uh, in my childhood because of my parents going to church regularly. And uh, in my freshman year at college, I uh, started to looking for a job um, as I, uh, as I go to, used to go to college at, uh, during the evenings. Um, and I used to think that my career kind of belonged to a, to the company. So I, re I remind myself during the interviews, asking the interviewer about, about, I mean, what kind of career plan you have, you have to give me and, you know, next steps of the career, if, if I accept the, the offer and so on. And I got kind of frustrated <laughs> because they, they didn't have any st structured plan. And uh, so I, I joined the junior enterprise at the, the university incubator and started to, as a volunteer, to help um, tech startups, uh, guys with uh, digital ideas, you know, to solve problems and so on. It was a really emerging digital, digital and startup scene in, in Brazil. Um, and for four years, I, I worked uh, helping tech entrepreneurs uh, and meanwhile, building my own career plan, right? Um, it was, it is very important to me uh, still today. Um, and uh, I kind of built up a 10 page career plan with strategies, with, you know, things that I wanted to accomplish, uh, goals after my retirement. It's very, it was very uh, structured, I used to, used to update that on a regular basis. And um, it became very important to me. So, um, um, and then I, I had this feeling of, of, you know, wanting to be a global citizen um, and figure out the next step was to joining a multinational. Uh, so after a couple of years uh, working with uh, tech startups in the very early stage businesses, I started working for um, a global biotech company uh, leader in, 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 their, in their field. I stayed there for, for five years for other, other large organizations as well. Um, and during this time, um, I kind of um, was growing in the career, you know, got some uh, great promotions. Uh, they gave me an America's position. Um, so I used to um, go back and forth to, to the United States uh, very often. And, and that's how I, I learned the, 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 the little English I can, I can speak today. You're uh, doing great. Yeah, thank you. And, um, and, and during, during one of these trips, I joined a, a youth gathering. Um, and they, they're calling about, about career. They're talking about uh, vocation and missions. And they were not uh, only pastors talking about it. They were entrepreneurs. And in my mind at the church, uh, I used to use my career and my salary to fund and to finance, to, to, you know, to fund missions and, and social projects. But I never thought that my career strategically placed uh, for a kind of purpose, a God purpose or how to fit within it. And for, for the first time, I had all this, I, I think, structured uh, career plan. And for the first time I, I prayed uh, God, I don't want to build my own plans um, because my career is actually it doesn't belong to a company. It even doesn't belong to me. But if if I believe you God exists and you own my life, you also own my career, and um, I want to be part of what you're doing in the world, and I want my career to be part of that. Um, and it was very uh, you know a turning key a moment to me that I, I, I realized uh, my career could be used by God to his mission. 
and um, I had to I had to face a lot of uh, difficult challenges after that, difficult decisions. Um, and I I stayed uh, in Brazil for a while, and um, and suddenly I started to help entrepreneurs again, uh, and was more open to um, to give some steps that that were not. Uh, inside my own career plan and my own planning. So I think God was speaking to me very clearly about it. And uh, as I started to help entrepreneurs again, um, I thought, okay, uh, so let's, let's start a, a, a company, a, an accelerator to help those entrepreneurs, uh, but not another, uh, only another accelerator, but something with Christian values, with, uh, with faith in it, um, in order to to see the marketplace as our mission field, so that that that's why Bluefields uh, came to be, and it's a, it's a joining. So, uh, of two words, there is this book, uh, Blue Space Strategy. They're about innovation and and, and new things, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, and mission fields. Uh, so that, that's why we created the name Bluefields all together uh, to like that. understand that as we innovate, as we do into entrepreneurship, uh, we are in the mission field and uh, as, as an act of, of worship uh, through our work. Mm. And, um, so I left my job, I quit um, in the end of uh, 2015 and uh, 2016, we, uh, we started uh, what I call the, the biggest challenge in my, in my life. It, it, it was not definitely my career plan. <laughs> and I uh, really believe God, God drove us to, to do that. Oh. I want to come back to some of your decisions and uh, more about Bluefield in just a moment. But before we go too far, I want to, you know, we've been going around the globe over the last 21 hours and talking to people from all over the uh, the globe. And before we get too far, for those not familiar with Brazil, tell us a little bit about the culture of Brazil, maybe a bit about the climate, and and complete your thought with what you see is happening in the church today in Brazil. Okay. Brazil a, has a tropical weather. Um, it's very known by its agriculture businesses, uh, food industry as well. It's, it's located in South America. Uh, it's the biggest uh, country in the continent. We speak Portuguese. Um, uh, so I think we are, yeah, we are the only, only country in Latin America that doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, it's our bad, <laughs> but uh, we, can, we can barely understand each other. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, we are, the Brazilian population is about uh, 210 million people, um, and uh, and Brazilians is Brazilians are known in the world to be like uh, welcome people, friendly, uh, and 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 the best national team in soccer, as everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Brazil is facing a, a a political a political crisis. The country is very divided. I think. Uh, the, the guys who live in, 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 in the U.S. know what I'm talking about. So um, a lot of, lot of is issues happening there um, now. And next year is, is going to be uh, uh, going to have elections again for, for president. And uh, so it, it might become uh, worse, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, the church is also getting divided now. Um, because of politics, um, uh, church uh, isn't isn't in the place, um, isn't in the safe in the same in the safe place right now. So people have doubts. People uh, question 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 the, the church. If the church should be more political. If the church should uh, get away uh, from mm -hmm. that. So it is it is a it is a sensitive um, subject now for for the country. Um, Despite the fact that evangelicals, I mean, the church has been growing a lot in Brazil. Uh, we, we used to be known as the, the largest uh, Catholic country in the world. We still are. But uh, out of 200 something million uh, of people, 
uh, we have now 40 million uh, that are that are members of the Protestant Church. Uh, they are evangelicals from from different different denominations, um, and and I think young people are are getting more and more committed to the gospel. Um, so I, I really believe in the next generations uh, of, of Brazil emerging, and you know, um, and there is this uh, this this growing this strong and growing movement in Brazil of people wanting wanting to integrate faith and work. Um, you know, um, Brazilian church is rescuing uh, what something that never been, uh, that, that sh sh shouldn't have been separated, you know, the, the, the faith and, and work, the 99% the, the of the church were not ministers, pastors, missionaries, as we know, but are professionals in the marketplace, um, I think, and, and the, the, the sacred secular uh, trade-off is, 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 is very common in Brazil. You know, people don't relate their faith on Mondays. Uh, they just be Christian on, on Sundays. And, and there is this big conference going on these days as we speak, faith and work, identity testimony in the marketplace. And... Uh, I, I, I think Brazilians are understanding that. So um, church is, is doing a, a relevant role in that uh, as well. So um, it's, a, it's a complex moment, uh, but I, I'm optimistic about, about the future, especially next generation with a, a better theology and mythology. Yeah. What, what economic issues are facing Brazil right now? Uh, inflation is a, is a big problem right now. Um, it's it's growing uh, two digits. It, it, it's been many years that we haven't experienced a two-digit uh, inflation rate, uh, which is bad. Um, so public efforts uh, are now concentrated to raise uh, tax, to raise uh, you know uh, um, interest rates, which is bad to the economy, and. Uh, and as as a, as, a, as as a developing country, um, once inflation goes up, it becomes harder. So people lose um, power in their purchases. You know, it becomes uh, life becomes uh, harder, and um, it, it generates more employment. So it's a it's a tricky moment in Brazil. I think it's still reflection from the from the pandemic uh, that economy closed down, and you know. So I think we are we are paying the bill right now, and um, uh, but but what 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 makes me um, uh, what gives me hope is that um, Brazilian land is 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 rich, you know. Uh, there is such such a potential for for bioeconomy in Brazil, uh, for uh, technology in, in agriculture in food industry in healthcare systems, you know, industries and so on, uh, which, which I believe will be, will be the, the, the future of the country uh, as, as we grow in terms of innovation, uh, becoming a more innovative country, uh, more friendly for entrepreneurs. <clears throat> Brazil is very, Brazil is very well, um, is very bad rank, rank into into all uh, innovation and entrepreneurship rankings, uh, you know the the analysis they run. Uh, it's it's not it's very chaotic and bad place for someone who wants to open a business. Um, despite the fact we have many successful entrepreneurs in the tech world, uh, I think we are the fifth country in terms of startup unicorns. You know startups that are valued more than one billion dollars <throat> in less than ten years. Uh, so we are, uh, we have more than 20 of these companies already. Um, and, and I think this can, this can be very fruitful in, in economics as well. I want to go back to your uh, company, Bluefields Accelerators. For those who may not be familiar with it, tell us what an accelerator is and why does it matter? What, what importance does it play in the faith and work uh, efforts that you're interested in? Right. The next leader actually has uh, has the mission to to speed up the, the entrepreneurship journey. Um, so uh, if 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 
if a company, if, if a startup, a tech startup, um, sometimes, um, I mean, it, it takes uh, one or two years for them to accomplish the next level when they are in their business development stage. If they go through an accelerator, we can shorten that time to a few months. Uh, and how we do that uh, by uh, innovation methodology, tools, um, and mainly connections with, with customers, men mentors, investors, and, and everything else that entrepreneurs need to drive and flourish and make the ideas to flourish. And uh, as we do, as accelerators do a lot of entrepreneurs uh, and serve entrepreneurs, uh, they are facing uh, during this uh, business development, during their, their entrepreneurship journey, they are, they are facing uh, a lot of tr struggles. I mean, uh, emotionally, uh, f uh, physically, uh, spiritually, uh, they, they, they have invested a lot in their ideas. I mean, they, they really believe that uh, they might have conflicts in their marriage. Uh, because they're, they're, there's a lot of pressure to, to generate revenue, you know, to, to pay the bills. Um, it, it's, a, it's an early stage moment in their, in their entrepreneurship journey. And an accelerator could uh, give them uh, care uh, beyond uh, business development tools and opportunities. And, uh, um, and since we... Uh, we started Bluefields thinking about how to impact economically and spiritually those, those ventures. Uh, we have pretty, pretty unique opportunities uh, to share our faith um, to, to entrepreneurs. And we are pretty much intentional about that as we run acceleration programs um, together with, uh, with those uh, tech companies. And um, we, we pray together with them. Um, we, we, we speak um, um, what's, what are behind the numbers a, a lot of times. And, uh, you know, we, we try to uh, be friends uh, as we, we help them to grow their ventures. So I think just to, to be there, to know what they are facing. And, and as, as we also felt that in the, in the early, early days of Bluefields, I think there are a lot of empathy we can build and, and relationship. Uh, thing about Brazil, it's a very relational culture. Um, and people are open to, um, you know, to, to listen and to, to understand your point. And I think we, um, different than Silicon Valley, for instance, that has a very uh, strong uh, culture and ecosystem, I mean, behind the, 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 the tech scene, uh, Brazilian startup innovation ecosystem is still under formation. It's still under development. So I think it's a it's a it's a very short window window of opportunity for us to influence with Christian like values and principles in the marketplace. Um, as the many startups of today are, are the large companies of of the future, right? Uh, so if what if influence them with with our values, with our purpose, with a better culture in the company, with a better care of people. Uh, so we are, we are helping to build the, the future businesses of the country. We kicked off our global church forum uh, hearing from Tom Lynn, who's the president of InterVarsity in the USA. And we were talking about the need for humility and learning from those around the globe as we all interact with each other and how important that is, especially for uh, issues of faith and issues of the church. Uh, we all have different perspectives, but how important it is to learn uh, from each other. What maybe are a thing or two that you've learned from your partners around the globe as it relates to thinking outside the box, uh, integrating that secular and sacred that you talked about, any uh, examples you can share along that line? Yes, um, I think uh, I could talk about resilience. Um, and I, in my case, really, resilience has a lot to do with uh, obedience. Um, because I'm, it was very clear to me uh, God's direction about building what what we have built now and uh but sometimes a step of faith were required was required and um 
and sometimes there is just nothing there, you know. Um, and and I think as we just keep going, and uh, people 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 that work with blue fields, they could, uh, including myself, we could. We could be doing anything else in any other part of the world, but we, uh, it, it's, it, is, it is related to a burden as well, you know? We, we uh, at, so, I mean, at, at the same time, we could have been doing other stuff. We, we kind of stuck with that because it's, it's, it's the Holy Spirit placing resi resilience and obedience in our hearts to, to keep going, you know? And, and, and I think, we are in peace with that. It, it's not confusing. It's not um, harmful to us. It's it's a pleasure. It's it's a pleasure to see our work as an act of worship and and be convicted, be completely sure that we are doing what God wants to to us to do. Um, so I think it it, it builds resilience uh, from from God to to inside us that naturally we wouldn't have that, you know. Uh, and, and I think when, when we think about it, it's, it's, uh, it's an act of, of humility as well, um, because we rely 100% on, on what God can do and not uh, the work of our own hands. So we, we could keep going, working hard, uh, but not, see, not seeing the fruits. Um, so uh, and, and getting confident that God's going to provide and he does uh, makes us uh, light and, and happy. Uh, uh, do you have an example of maybe somebody that you've worked with that's gone through Bluefield's acceleration process and, and the impact that it had on them, this process with the focus on faith and work? Yes, there is. Uh, there are a lot of stories uh, we, we can share, but let, let's, let's pick one. This, there is this guy from the northeast of Brazil. You know, we, we, we serve entrepreneurs from all, all across the country. And this guy from northeast with a social impact idea of uh, a technology that, that it's a, the building blocks for construction. Uh, so they, he kind of um, uh, created a, a patent and innovated in the process and uh, for more sustainable houses, you know, construction and so on. It's, it's a very good idea. But they were very like uh, uh, not not focusing on 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 sales properly. So we helped them to to increase sales uh, uh, by three digits. You know, uh, multiplying their their uh, their sales uh, pipeline. However, this guy was facing was facing a a huge <laughs> a dark uh, marriage crisis. Because they were they were not making revenue and um, and he invested he sold his apartment uh, their their kids were concerned his wife was completely crazy about the pressure of dealing with with the idea that we're not working was not working you know as as they they thought initially and uh, during during one of our uh, acceleration uh, sessions um, we talked about family. And how every every entre entrepreneurial effort is a family effort, even even if the the family member, the, the wife or the husband are, are not like a business partner, it's 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 a family. It has a family impact. You know, every everyone is together and suffering together, and uh, and his marriage was was kind of almost over. You know, almost done with that. And and they they recovered their marriage and they 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 read they started reading the Bible for the first time together they they, they never uh, read the Bible before and uh, and they became Christians wow uh, so it it is it is a good story because it has uh, business impact because we 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 try to you know to to help him raising money and, and selling more. Uh, meanwhile, we we, have, we assisting them to recover their marriage, you know. Uh, so this is this is a very nice story. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's interesting as as we talk about different types of engagement in work and faith and missions and ministry. You know, a lot of people around the world don't typically think about. Uh, 
marketplace leaders or entrepreneurship as being part of that equation. But the truth is, just as you've explained, we've seen example after example of how people like you engaging in the field through business with somebody else can make an impact on their life, just like a a, a person at a uh, at a camp or a retreat, or just like a pastor in a church and counseling another family. Uh, those opportunities are making themselves known. In the few minutes, a uh, couple of minutes we have left, how do you see the face of global missions changing? And do you see it including more and more of this type of activity? Yes, I believe we need to rethink missions globally uh, and include people in the marketplace as missionaries. When, when you look at uh, the statistics and unreached, unreached countries and missionaries that are, are there, uh, people in the marketplace are not included. How, how many Christians in the marketplace there are in those in those markets that could be helpful and, and are part of God's mission? Uh, I think sometimes we expect that one percent of the church runs all the mission work that God has to do, you know, uh, missionaries and pastors. But what what about the ninety nine percent of the people? They they shouldn't be worrying themselves to fund the the one percent only. Uh, funding is, is a biblical design part of what we should do. Uh, but it's it's not a trade-off. I mean, sh should I be a missionary or should I be a professional in the marketplace? We are called to be both at the same time. And uh, I think we need to rescue that concept. Uh, we need to re remind about Lydia, about Daniel, about, I mean, uh, Joseph, many biblical stories that God used people in the marketplace with their skills, with their abilities. And they, they accomplished great things uh, that made the whole difference in God's history in the marketplace. So it is biblical designed. And uh, we forgot that throughout history. Um, and I think we need to, to rescue that and, and, and with a good mythology, with a good theology, uh, for for pastors to equip people in the marketplace for their daily mission starting on Monday. Paolo, it's been great to talk to you and to hear your story. Uh, God bless you and all the work you're doing and keep it up. It's, uh, it's great to hear uh, the practical way that you're helping people in their work, but the more important and deep way that you're impacting their lives personally through uh, integrating the sacred and the secular. We thank you so much for your time. I mentioned I have a new daughter-in-law from Brazil. They're gonna be down there for Christmas and I'm hoping maybe to visit in the next year or two. I'd love to look you up when I'm there. Yes, please, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Colleen. All Blessing. right, thanks so much. Great to have you with us on the Global Church Forum. Juan